Live pictures are from the Lee Funeral Home. Uh, you see on your screen right now is, uh, uh, we believe, where the body of uh, Bob Kodimo is. Uh, this morning he passed away yesterday. Those are live pictures from the Lee Funeral Home here in Nairobi where the body of uh, the late Michael, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Bob Kodimo lies. He died yesterday succumbing to cancer and uh, should be interred the remains at least this morning or uh, today, later today, in a private ceremony. Those are live pictures from the Lee Funeral Home. We'll keep them there and uh, keep you posted on what happens. Uh, in the meantime, Michael Joseph, the former CEO, has been appointed in the interim at least to lead the organization in this uh, period of transition. All right, Bada Mambule? Yeah, so I was saying that I believe it is pursuant to that direction that was given by the president to cabinet secretary Munya mm -hmm. to bring together a caucus of Mount Kenya leaders and try and create a framework for resolving issues that are particular to the Mount Kenya region mm -hmm. and which is perfectly in order because any other person from any other place across the country mm -hmm. can also caucus for development in their region. So it is this particular caucus which I believe mm -hmm. has now been branded a, a plotier for purposes of assassinating yes. the deputy <clears throat> president. Now, having said that, let me tell you something. I think most of the politicians that you see on the Kenyan landscape are extremely um, uh, well educated, they are extremely well exposed, and they have many years of serious political experience. Mm -hmm. So do not see anything that happens on the political scene and think that it is what you see. It is probably mm -hmm. a calculated <clears throat> move which cumulatively is going to lead us to some place. Now, the most important thing mm -hmm. that you must understand is that if I were in the Ruto camp today, mm -hmm. I would learn one lesson, that Raila Odinga became such a thorn in the flesh of the president mm -hmm. that he probably sat down and said, why don't I bring this brother of mine mm -hmm. onto the table so that we can have a discussion on how to move the country forward mm -hmm. together? Is it possible that the handlers of the deputy president have learned from that lesson and they are saying, let us create such disunity, let us create such tension, such noise. That they can't ignore us. So <laughs> that these fellows can no longer ignore us. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is exactly what this guy is doing. All right. And they are backed, <laughs> and, and this time round, mm -hmm. they are backed with an advantage that they are actually... They, they actually hold the position of the deputy president. Mm -hmm. They have government slots, and they can actually create problems okay. from within. Okay. So it could be possible that this is a, a plot mm -hmm. to, to, to make the president reach out to them and say, mm -hmm. okay, I know that bringing uh, my friend Raila Odinga on board has mm -hmm. created discomfort, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that I have cut my ties with you. Yes. It only means we are working together for the, for the big country. Okay. But I also understand mm -hmm. that politically speaking, uh, one deputy president, William Ruto, would not have a situation where he sees that there is a possibility that in this process he is going to have a situation in which Raila Odinga probably, probably rebrands himself and then comes out forward. And you can see that Raila Odinga is doing something which a lot of people are not looking at. Mm. He is revamping the ODM party across the nation while the Jubilee party is in a shambles. Mm. So if today we were to go to the grassroots and start canvassing for elections, there's a, a very high chance that the ODM uh, grassroots support would, would be higher. But most importantly, in Jubilee right now, there has been calls of election, Not, nothing is happening. We cannot even hold, um, they cannot even hold a parliamentary group meeting mm -hmm. for, for, for various reasons. And of course, the DP understands that if the situation remains like this, it is going to be a disadvantage on him. And I believe he's decided, rather than sit and wait, to go to the, to, the, offensive. To, 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 to the offensive. All right. Uh, let's, let's walk away from politics now and discuss <laughs> issues of uh, interest to, uh, to Kenyans. And one of them, actually, is the state of the economy. All right. Uh, they're saying it grew um, last year uh, by 6.3% or thereabout. Um, some people are actually doubting this figure. They're saying... You're telling us about a growing economy, but we can't see jobs, there are no b uh, benefits to it. We, we can't see tangible benefits, so to speak, from a growing economy. So many Kenyans being laid off, uh, you know, companies closing down. Just yesterday or the other the day before, we did see um, tens of thousands of Kenyans standing up at Echo Hotel for five positions that were advertised. That should tell you something, at least, David. I think that there has been 
I mean, it's a challenging times for the economy globally. Mm -hmm. So Kenya is not an isolated situation. The global economy has been slowing down a bit. And that has a knock-off effect on almost each and every country. But I also think that uh, we do not lack policies. We lack implementers of those policies so that they work for the country. You see, President Uhuru Kenyatta cannot rely on Raila to effect these policies. He relies on a team of solid cabinet secretaries who he holds accountable as professionals to make and implement policies. Mm -hmm. Theirs, I bet, would be to just implement policies that have been existing. I do not want to be the judge of how the CS Rotich in charge of Treasury, under whose docket this squarely as sat, has performed. But I bet that we would be in a much better place if we had a more innovative you know, couple of leaders around the president. And that's why sometimes I have been, before I have been, and today I still will be a proponent for a reshuffle. Mm -hmm. Because if midway things don't seem to be working for you, then it means the team of foot soldiers you have have let you down. Mm -hmm. You must not kick all of them away. You cannot have Matiangi doing everything for you. He is only but human. He can only go so far. Mm -hmm. He can only handle so much. Mm -hmm. The government is so massive, you cannot rest it on the shoulders of one person or on Magoha. You need, at the very least, seven of those to try and move, especially the drivers of, you know, of the economy, which I bet President Kenyatta has christened as you know the big four agenda mm -hmm. because once you fix the manufacturing sector inevitably <clears throat> sorry you have fixed you have created jobs yes once you ensure that we are a food secure nation the work that goes into making kenya a food secure nation will have a knock-off effect of creating jobs mm -hmm. because then agriculture becomes big the, mm -hmm. that agrarian revolution is able to create jobs on its own mm -hmm. And you then ensure that we have a healthy nation so that these people who are working mm -hmm. are not dying because they know there, there is remedy for it. Okay, let me just uh, stop you there. Let's uh, go back to Lee Funeral Home where uh, you see the live pictures there uh, outside uh, the Lee Funeral Home where the body of Bob Colimo is. And uh, our reporter Sharon Baranga is over there. Sharon, could you just tell us what's happening over there? Uh, thank you, Edmond. We are, we are at Lee Funeral Home, and uh, the family of the late chief executor, executive officer of Safari Com has just arrived uh, to get his body. We understand today is going to be Bob's final journey from Lee. From here, they are going, to, um, they are going for another service where they are going to do a cremation. We are yet to, uh, the place is yet to be disclosed to the media, but it is a very private private uh, ceremony we have a number of uh, senior managers who are current who, who just arrived here at the Lee funeral home and um, the celebrated CEO safari of uh, safari Como suffering from cancer and we we, we, we he he, be he began his uh, treatment in Nairobi before he was referred to a hospital in London so uh, close to close to one year he has been battling cancer and uh, he succumbed to the disease in the early hours of uh, m uh, Monday and uh, we also understand that he knew of uh, what uh, was going to happen and he had already prepared his uh, family uh, back to you, Edmund thank you so much uh, Sharon Baranga live from uh, the Lee funeral home where the body of uh, the late CEO of Safaricom Bob Colimo lies and will be taken from and will be interred in a private ceremony this morning. The family, as we understand, is there and some of the top managers and directors of the company as well and uh, some members of the board have arrived there. And so we'll keep you updated on what happens from the Lee Funeral Home and the final bow of the former CEO of Safaricom, Bob Colimo.